imagine Imagine yourself in San Jose Believers The dreamers Imagine the life you want today Tonight we're all here to honor Clyde and the production of his Clyde Arbuckle's History of San Jose. I'm a very, very proud to be a part of that. Helen Arbuckle told me tonight, she said, we lived to see it come about. And I felt that way too. It was very fortunate that we now have the book all finished. I noticed that uh, on a billboard near downtown San Jose, there's a billboard sponsored by O'Connor Hospital, and it reads, great things are accomplished not by thought, but by years of patient study. I should like to paraphrase that last portion, do great things are accomplished by years of patient work. For this book is an accomplishment of a lifetime of study and work by our own Clyde Arbuckle, who's been the city historian for 41 years. Over these years, he's accumulated this vast storehouse of knowledge. This book is but a small part of that vast storehouse, but it is a representation that will live for many, many years to come. I've been proud to be a part of that production team for this literary effort. Many, many more people have been involved. And I would like to thank some of them here tonight. I'm sure that I will omit certain people, but please forgive me. A more comprehensive list appears on the acknowledgement page of your book. I wonder if we could have it a little bit quiet in the rear, please. If you could please tone it down in the rear, we could possibly hear in the front. First, let me thank Helen Arbuckle, whose kitchen table, dining room table, and living room table have been crammed with the research low these many years. Theron Fox first convinced the city council in 1970 that Clyde should be relieved of his museum duties so that he could work on this history. In the political arena, I wish to thank Mayor Tom McHenry, former city manager Francis Fox, the mayor's secretary, Mary Ellen Itner, and particularly to John Popovich. For those who worked on this book, I wish to thank my wife Harriet, to Myrna and Sinclair Cohen for their typesetting, to Paul Yoshikawa, who is here tonight, who designed the book, and most particularly to my son, Dave McKay, and to his staff at Smith & McKay Printing Company, who put in many long hours producing this fine volume. We're indebted to many people for the use of their pictures, to Mignon Gibson, to Helen Kiesel, and Nancy Valby of the Historical Museum staff, to Shirley Montgomery, to Dick Barrett, to 
Professor Tom Letter, to Don Butcher, to Lee Lester, Carlos Ogden, Joe Levitt, Rabbi Joe Gittin, Ernie Renzo, Merv Willoughby, and William Wolf. We've had a number of people come from long distances tonight to be here. From Toronto, Canada, is Susan Arbuckle, Clyde's daughter. And from Chicago, Illinois, is Harriet Duzay's son, Bill Duzay. From the state capital of California, we have a very, very fine public servant, our state librarian, Gary Strong, who's with us. Gary, would you wave? There he is. I particularly want to thank Bruce Poley and the San Jose Historical Museum Association for sponsoring this event tonight, and to Mary Mueller, Hank and Laura Calloway, Wally Wahlberg, and all the rest who have made this a very successful program. I'd like to introduce a few people, Mayor Tom McHenry, who will speak to you in just a minute, our Councilwoman, Iola Williams, and I'm sure there must be other council people and uh, members of the Board of Supervisors who are here. I'm sorry I haven't recognized you. I don't see you there. Now I'd particularly like to introduce uh, Chalo Bennett for a presentation to Clyde Arbuckle. Chalo? Clyde? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Clyde Arbuckle has presented for our view and remembrance the dynamic facets of our historical heritage in this area. Clyde links us with the past and the future. All of us have cherished images of Clyde some of us have been to gatherings where we've seen and heard him speak, honoring others. Many of us have been to gatherings which have honored him. Some of us have had classes taught by Clyde and taken fabulous historic trips with Clyde as the guide. And there are those of us who've been privileged to visit in the Arbuckle home and to have the Arbuckles visit in our homes and to get to know his lovely, charming wife, Helen. And whatever our association has been, all of us have been immensely enriched by the efforts and energies of this remarkable man. Those of us who know and love Clyde were able to commission a fine arts oil portrait done by artist Paul Murphy, who was recommended by publisher Leonard McKay. Many individuals and organizations made contributions the funding of that project and they were happy to be able to participate in the show of esteem for Clyde. You will have a roster indicating the names of all of those who gave and we would like this portrait to say thank you for a job well done to an octogenarian still going strong and most of all we would like for it to say we love you Clyde Arbuckle
Thank you very much, Chalo. As you all know, Chalo and Marty Bennett, our husband and wife, now would like to introduce his honor, the mayor of San Jose, Tom McHenry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Most uh, speeches I make are forgettable since this is a very special occasion for the city of San Jose. We probably ought to close the bar back there so more people would pay attention to uh, the main item we're going to, to discuss here. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we could do that. They try this occasionally at conventions and I've never done it before, but let's see if it works. <laughs> That also works, that also works. You know, as mayor, you uh, get to preside over a variety of different functions. You open major public buildings, you go to, uh, you go to the unveiling of major new products. Uh, I can honestly say that there's no more significant event in my tenure of mayor than what we're doing here this evening, and I'm very proud to be associated with it. I think, you can break in any time for applause. <laughs> I think one of the first things as uh, mayor I should offer to do, Clyde, if that picture uh, cannot find a suitable place in your home, I think where it really appropriately ought to be displayed in, is in one of the new municipal buildings we're building downtown. And I'm sure the council would agree uh, with me that the picture of Clyde Arbuckle ought to, uh, ought to hang in a building where hundreds of thousands of people ought to see it instead of in your front room. So please accept that. <laughs> Please accept that as an offer. Uh, Leonard mentioned a few thank yous. I would like to thank very much Leonard McKay for the work he's put in uh, to this project. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely deserves that. Uh, it was really a, a yeoman effort to do what Leonard has done. I don't know how many people would have been, uh, had the temerity and, and courage to undertake it, but uh, he and uh, Fran Fox and I sat down for a lunch uh, about two years ago. Uh, Fran and I agreed that it was a good idea. Uh, Leonard and Clyde did the work. So uh, I, I very much like that distribution of labor, Leonard. So thank you very much. Also like to thank, and he was mentioned before, uh, Bruce Poley and the uh, Historical Museum Association for what they're doing here this evening. It's uh, uh, a very uh, significant thing and I thank them for that. You know, when you're thinking of something to say about Clyde Arbuckle, it is indeed not easy. I guess I first met Clyde when I was asking my father a bunch of, a bunch of questions on San Jose history. And my father had a pretty good repository of, of knowledge, oral history of, of the city of San Jose. But whenever I'd get into the really difficult areas and my father didn't feel like inventing certain aspects of, uh, of the real uh, history, he told me to go out and see Clyde Arbuckle. I think probably the first time I did that, I was about 12 years old, and I've really never gotten tired of doing that since. Uh, Clyde uh, has been called by me before uh, a natural resource for the city of San Jose. I think he is certainly that and the most significant national resource we have in this city. When you want to say something about Clyde, it's uh, uh, you often repeat yourself. So I thought I'd take the lines of uh, another person who I admire. Uh, John Kennedy was once uh, giving a, a brief introduction to uh, Robert Frost, and he said this about Robert Frost. I think politicians and poets share at least one thing, and that is their success depends upon the courage with which they face the challenge of life. There are many kinds of courage, bravery under fire, courage to risk reputation and friendship and career for convictions which are deeply held, but perhaps the rarest courage of all, for the skill to prove it is given to few men, is the courage to wage a silent battle to illuminate the nature and the world in which we live. I think that was aptly said about Robert Frost, and I can't think of any other individual that I think is worthy of being compared to someone such as Robert Frost. Clyde Arbuckle has waged that battle. It's inside the covers of this book. Uh, he's illuminated people and traditions and successes and failures and triumphs and tragedies, and it's a rare, rare thing that is in between the bounding of this book. Clyde is indeed someone who, after all the mayors and business leaders and currently popular figures are long, long forgotten, people are going to remember 
Clyde Arbuckle, and well they should. So I would be very pleased, Clyde, if you would step forward on behalf of Leonard and uh, a number of uh, other people who care so deeply about what you have done to present this copy. Uh, this is, I think, the, the first uh, a copy of the special premiere edition of the history of San Jose. It has a wonderful embossing, and Leonard, you can probably show me how to do this, because every time I tilt it, I don't really get a picture. Why don't you, why don't you tilt that a little bit so well, people can see? Can you see that? So we'll present that to Clyde Arbuckle, the best man the city has. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, every one of you. I've had the time of my life. And you know, this gathering this afternoon reminds me of a little uh, uh, an extract from the diary of Dr. Benjamin Corey, who served on the original city council of this city, was the first physician to settle in Santa Clara County, and all, with all, a great credit to our city. Uh, Dr. Corey told about crossing the river, uh, the Missouri River, at St. Joe, Missouri, in the spring of 1847. It was an exciting day. He said the well, first wagons had entered the stream, dogs were barking, women were yelling at the kids, the men were swearing at the oxen, the women were screaming from time to time, and uh, we started before daylight and we got finally across the river after dark at night. And then he said, I love such scenes of industry and excitement. And uh, this, uh, I just love to hear this, all this talk at once. When they tell you to be silent, they're, uh, they're talking to a group in which there is not one mean action. As far as I'm concerned, go ahead and enjoy yourself to the utmost. <laughs> but uh, I agree, I, I love to write the history of the town. I think there was, a, Leonard could tell you, uh, that there was considerably more than got into the book. But you know, it's better when you sit down at the table to get enough and instead of going away hungry. <laughs> so that, that's it. Again, this is a magnificent thing. I think before we leave, before we pardon, before we leave, I think uh, Leonard ought to tell you about the nature of the book and give you a few of the typographical facts because he knows far more about them than I do. He could give you the hint, uh, the history of this type of publication and printing. But uh, in the meantime, nobody's taking care of the store back there. <laughs> and, uh, and I came here to autograph books for you and I'm going to do my doggone and if we don't get them all done here tonight, we'll find time at my home or elsewhere, anywhere that we'd have to have it. Now, I, there were compliments uh, paid to some of my work and of course, my uh, history field trips. And to uh, night, uh, the uh, lady who is the boss of all those field trips and uh, helps me to, keep, me to keep out of trouble en route is here. And the, my family has already been introduced. So I should like to, uh, I'm still working, you know. I, I haven't retired yet. Uh, but uh, I think I'd like to introduce uh, the lady who is uh, responsible for all these field tricks that are constantly bringing notice and fame to San Jose. Uh, Mrs. Mary Mueller, will you come forward, please? <laughs> when, when I'm not at home at Helen, she's my boss on the road to make sure that I remember my marital obligations. <laughs> but. Uh, is this the lady who is uh, managing all these field trips, and now she's on the board of directors of the California and Oregon Trail Association. Mary, thank you for being here. You see that now? <laughs> so I'll go back now. I thank everyone, and uh, thank you, honor the mayor, and I thank Leonard Price.
And in the book, we, we had a list of accommodations, but we couldn't even touch on the number of people who made it possible to write this book and furnish me with information unstintingly. And there, there are any number of them, uh, probably in this audience, whom we haven't yet given sufficient uh, credit, but I wish to give you that credit right now. I'm a grateful to all of you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. Clyde is going to go back now and sign autographs. Those of you who might be interested in this very unusual four-edge painting, if you want to step forward, we'll be glad to show it to you. As a final word, I'd like to say after working with Clyde for three years on this book, we're still friends, and that's very, very important. <laughs>